All right, guys, we're back. Break room blitz. Today's episode is on the Get Down. Get Down. The new Netflix series that came out uh, maybe a month ago. Yeah, relatively new with the, like that. You know, the whole Stranger Things. Uh, they put out all these shows at once kind of thing. Right. So mm -hmm. we watched it. We wanted to let you guys know if you should be watching it. Definitely watch it, first of all. <laughs> uh, so, got these. I got a new shirt anyway. That's pretty dope. Yeah. I picked up, uh, you know, uh, King of Rock. This is a draft photo. Uh, oh. Back in Vietnam. Okay, all right. Didn't know that. Yeah, so a little music uh, to our music review here. Right. <laughs> huh, I didn't think about that. I tried to tie in. I didn't tie that in. I tried to be a little clever. I'm a little slow sometimes, I guess. It's all good. <laughs> All right, so synopsis. The Get Down focuses on 1970s New York City in the time of disco and the beginning of hip hop. The story circles around South Bronx teenagers who are trying to find their way, armed only with verbal games, improvised dance steps, some magic markers and spray cans. They start to make their way. The Get Down is told through the lives and music of the South Bronx kids who changed the city and the world forever. So, pretty much, it's, to me, I would say this 1973. Yeah, I would About say, 1973, because yeah, yeah. we got the beginning of hip-hop, hip -hop, but yeah. disco is still prominent. Mm -hmm. You know, they got the disco clubs, and they, they're showing all this, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. we get to see how people in disco didn't really know what hip-hop was and wasn't really feeling it. Right. You know, so it, it, I think that it's an awesome show. Now, the first episode, I didn't know what it was about. Yeah, neither did I either. I'm like, what is happening? Like, the visuals was awesome. The visuals were good, and I just figured, okay, it's just going to be kind of like an old school, that 70s show, but more realistic. Um, but, like, I guess it was like, yeah, I'm like, just kind of following the story, like, okay, what what, what are they actually getting me to? I'm glad it's not the, the, the 70s show, because I did not like that <laughs> show at all. <laughs> But that was more like a sitcom show. This one's like actually but it, follows the I get the your truth. point. It's, yeah. it's that the, era. The, the date. Kind of, yeah. Right. It's set in the 70s, you know. So, you know, that, that, that one episode almost had me like not watch it again. So if, if you're on the first episode, if you watch the first episode. Power through. Power through that 130 minute episode. Yeah. Because right after that, it picks up and it gets really good. Yeah, the second episode picks up like really good too. And like at, at the end of the first episode, I was like, okay, you know, let, let, me, let me take a break. Let me go back to watching the second episode. And I did that and I really liked it. And then after that, I was just steamrolling watching episode And I episode, appreciate episode. that, that you did oh. that because I... As an African American, I was like, uh, I'm done with this. Even though I should support it, yeah. but I'm like, an hour and 30 minutes, I have no idea what the show is about. I don't know what the premise is. Why are we here? Right. And it took another person to tell me that they were on like episode three and that it gets really good and I should watch it. So this is what we're doing for you guys. Yeah. We're telling you to go past that first episode. Yeah. And move on. Did you know called that this is the most expensive Netflix show that they've done? This one? Hundred million dollars. You know what? I kinda wanna believe that just because, you know, they, they they must have had to block off like entire sections of New York just to like I actually think record. I think this. it's all just visual effects. It's great visual effects. Though. I think it's all visual effects and it's I'm like, man, when did they film this? Because right. it like it looks like out of a I'm gonna just say old school camera. Yeah, um, that's grainy, mm -hmm. and it, it just—it just some of the shots just look like it was shot in 1973. Everyone's clothes, everyone, even the oh, way yeah, that they're familiar were... looks yeah. really good. <laughs> they have it down to yeah. a T. I'm like, man, the cars they were driving, the even like uh, you know the apartment complexes and all the rooms and everything it was just like on par within that time frame. Yeah, definitely. You know. I think that some stuff had to be shot then, mm -hmm. um, but I think that a lot of it is visual effects, but those apartments, those um, projects look like that today. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel like they did shoot some of it that was today, and then a lot of it is like visual effects. $100 Overlay. million dollars to make this show. Wow. Now, the only thing about that is $100 million, and it kind of got mediocre reviews. It got like See, a seventy four from uh, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. See, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. 
Maybe the first episode. Maybe the first episode and, got everyone. And, and that's the thing. Yeah, if if it's the first episode, you know, uh, you know, and we kind of say it with a lot of uh, TV shows and a lot of movies in general. It, you got to captivate me within those first, you know, couple minutes, you know, or within that first like half I'd hour. Say two mark. episodes. If you don't get me, then we're done. And and the first yeah. episode was 135 minutes. That's pretty much two episodes. It's more than enough time. That's an entire movie Definitely. if you think about it. Yeah. So I kind of kind of agree with that because that's probably what they're going off. I wish they would have written it. A little better, yeah. To let me know what I'm watching, because I don't know. This is Netflix show says the get down, right? I'm not reading the synopsis and everything. When I press play, I just want to be captivated, right? Yep. If I don't know what's happening, mm-hmm. then I'm gonna move on to the next show because there's so much on Netflix. Yeah, absolutely. I think maybe that's what they what they're judging off of was that mm-hmm. first episode. I, I would believe that. Yeah, I mean, every single episode after that was just like, okay, I needed to find out what it happens next. Man, every single one. Yeah. After the first one, every single one made me really want to see what was going on. So what do you think about the the characters? You think that they cast it pretty well? I think they cast it awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Like I don't know any any one of these characters except for uh Will Smith's son. Right, Jaden Smith. So Jaden Smith is in it. Um I think this is where he lives. He's yeah. not gonna yeah. be some big blockbuster he, actor. He's a support. Right, he's a, and he's even support in the show. He's not even a, not even a star in this show. No, it doesn't follow him. But he's a great support. He's a great support, and it works. His, I feel like this is where he lives as far as like Hollywood. You just need to be kind of like B list a little bit, yeah. and you're a supporting actor. You're not some big action right. role hero person that you're trying to be now, right? Because it's not working. No, absolutely not. And I mean, you take, I mean, his father for instance, and I, you you can't compare him to Will Smith because Will Smith was a star. You know, uh, you know, doing Fresh Prince, actually in hip hop and all that. But I mean, like, you know, maybe this isn't the time for Jaden right now. Maybe when he gets older, then he'll like kick in and it's just like, oh, he you know, powered through his like earlier years, and then he was just like Oscar every year. Or I something. think he was great as a kid. Most all kids are are cute, so it worked for him. Yeah. But then now he's kind of like a preteen, or he's a, he's a teenager now, at least if not an adult, and it's just not working. He doesn't have like that impactful that screen presence right no yeah you know and his acting is just not there so let's just do smaller roles right absolutely on netflix and especially do not do another karate kid too because (laughs) if you're doing karate kid in china it's called kung fu (laughs) (laughs) yeah it that i I mean that one that movie was okay but oh anyway um, so other actors that followed. I mean, uh, the only other uh, bigger actors that I can. Uh, so pretty much, you follow a group of you know uh, the main actor being this Justice Smith, and uh, his character name is Ezekiel. No and relation to Jaden Smith. No relation at all. <laughs> by the way, it's been a big thing. They've been like people are like are they related? Are, are they you related? cousins? Or right. Brothers? Yeah, they actually played a they uh, Justice Smith played a trick on one of the producers and said, oh, Jaden, oh, he's coming? Oh, that's my cousin. And the guy <laughs> kind of like believed him and he was like, no, nah, I'm just playing. And it was a whole big thing. So Justice Smith is the, the lead character. I think that he is a great actor. He's a great actor. Now, you know what? He was like, uh, you know, you talk about a lot, you know, uh, is something uh, played to your intelligence. And he was our intelligent character. He definitely in this. is. He was our wordsmith. And wordsmith. I, you know, I just love that title alone. Just wordsmith. I was like, we got blacksmith. We've got all these different smiths, you know? And, you know, he, that he played to that role. He was a wordsmith. He came up with all these lyrics. He was a lyricism, right. you know? And I love that. You know? Right. So and the thing that, about this show, so with their group, they're trying to become the, they don't know what it's called hip hop yet, but they're trying to become the hip hop gang or, or group of their time, of their mm-hmm. borough, of their city. And Shamik Moore, he plays the, I guess, the apprentice of the Grandmaster Grand Flash. Master. Right. And so once they, once they said Grandmaster Flash, I knew what the show was about. Right? That's the first time I was like, oh, this is like a historical hip hop tribute or And and they kinda hit you like blindsided. They blindsided me with they it. They did. Because I was just like, wait a minute, where was this? This should have been at the beginning, I feel. Right, because I thought that it was gonna be about like just kids. I was like kinda like a game related graffiti type of thing. Right. Because that's you know, Jaden Smith, he's doing the graffiti and you see the kids that are um doing a graffiti in, in the first episode. So yeah. I'm thinking that's what it's about. Yeah, territory, and, like right. battle. You know? Right. But no, it's about the five parts of hip-hop. We got um, the DJ, we got the 
um, lyricist was the rapper. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got graffiti. We got the mm-hmm. um, uh, the dancing, the pop locking, mm-hmm. and things like that. And, and, and singing, you know. And the fifth element they don't really talk about, but the fifth element would just be the spiritual part of it. But that's not really in mm-hmm. the show. Mm-hmm. But at least we get four parts of it. Now I'm I don't want to say that I am a hip hop historian. But mm-hmm. I do know a lot of history about how hip hop started. So once they say Grandmaster Flash, I knew right off the bat that it was going to be good. And I was like, oh snap! Now I know what we're talking about. Now right. I know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and Shamik Moore, he plays a he's an upcoming DJ, mm-hmm. and uh, he wants to get his group together. And uh, Justice Smith, which is Ezekiel, mm-hmm. uh, he's the the actual rapper or the MC. I say the MC. There you go. And you can see the. Um, infancy of that relationship, the MC and the DJ, and there's a part where he says, you know, I don't want you to outshine me. I'm the DJ. Right. You know, you're just representing who I am. Right. And that that was the the relationship at first. It wasn't about the MC or the rapper. It was about the DJ. Mm-hmm. He was the one that's bringing in the people to to dance, He's bringing the party, right? He's making people dance, speeding up the tempo, right? Doing a little scratching. And we got the rapper, yeah, from. You just want to represent who I am. I don't have right. a mic. You have the mic. Represent who I am. Get the party rocking. Right. And so justice, justice is the actual word. So now I've never heard that term. Now I could be like I said, I'm not a his, historian. Right. So maybe that is a term they used to use. If they made it I up, I thought it was it. genius. Right. <laughs> yeah. But they are. He is a wordsmith. He's the way a, they yeah. wrote his character, he's like awesome. Like he just he seems kind of like. Um, I don't want to say feeble, but kind of shy at first. But then when he, when it's his time to shine, yeah, he steps up and he just like rocks the crowd. Right, he just he's a wordsmith. I feel like he was angry, like like the way that they portrayed him. You know, he was a little angry for himself for holding himself back. You mm-hmm. know, and then finally when he like lets it out, he's just like, you know what, forget it. You know, I need to say something because no one else is gonna say it. Right, and you know what I liked, and then I think this is a something that's lacking today is that what motivating him now his teacher was telling me you should be something his auntie was telling me you should be something Mm -hmm. but what motivated him was the girl that he loved girl that he loved told him that we can't be together as much as i like you we can't be together because i'm gonna be something yeah and whenever it's time for you to step up and be a man you don't want to do it you writing this poetry and you won this award for for the poem you wrote but you don't want to actually uh recite your poem he's holding back right and she didn't like that so he was like you know what I'm gonna go ahead to have, I'm gonna have to step up and be a man, and I like that. I think that impressing a, a, a woman is like a lot of people' motivation, and I think that that's not today's society. But which is why you have a lot of people that's not doing much. But I feel like you 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 need every guy needs to get them a girl that motivates them. If your girl don't Absolutely. motivate you to be nothing, then I don't know. There's no point of having her. So yeah. he like, noticed I'm, that I'm on par here. I need you to be on here, if not more. You know, right? <laughs> and she called him on his shit, and yeah. he was like, "You know what? I'm gonna make it out. I'm gonna make it out the ghetto too. I'm gonna be somebody, yeah. but just my way." We're both gonna make it in Manhattan. You know, I'm not gonna have you visit me. I'm gonna come visit you. It's no long distance right. relationship. Right. That was their, that was their goal. They wanted to be in Manhattan. Yeah. You know, because I guess in the Bronx and uh, I guess the other boroughs, it's just kind of like the ghetto. Mm-hmm. So they're, they they they're. Um, I guess upper class or middle class would be Manhattan, and yeah, I'm I'm glad that they put that because I mean we're over here in the West Coast, we don't know much about the East Coast, but I mean the fact that they brought that up a lot, I appreciated that. They right. gave that's us like a sense Beverly of that. Hills. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. right. Like that's that's what we have to aim for. We're looking at that uh, Manhattan skyline. You right. Know? And that's their moving on up, moving on up. So you you, you like the acting? I like the acting. Um, does the show the remind you of anything? Characters were good. You know, the I show is kind of original to me. Yeah, it doesn't remind me of anything. I don't think we had a show like this because I'm trying to think about like other shows, but they're all in the modern age. You know, you know. It's right. Like, I mean, like, and or they follow the music business. You know, there was that other show, Empire, and then there's there have been other shows that take place kind of like that. I mentioned the '70s show. But I mean that was like not as so up to the budget. Though. Yeah, I mean you can tell the quality. Yeah, put the behind quality this. is really it really Net- captivating. Netflix, they they are like not sparing any expense in this show. I want people to watch it because they did spend so it's the most expensive show they've ever done. So I want people to like it. I want them to write it to where people are going to be attracted. I want a season two. I think this is <laughs> I, honestly. I think this is mostly for um, African Americans and Latinos. This is 
that's pretty much just all that's in there. You know, so we got Spanish speakers. Yeah. You know, we got the, the, the African-American element to it. Mm -hmm. And not leaving anyone out that was a part of the whole hip-hop movement. Right. And yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, like her, like the the girl he loves, her dad, who right. is a yeah. Latino. Yeah, a lot of Puerto Rican influence, a lot right. of African American influence, how they mold together. There's a lot of mixture and, uh, you know, it, it really shows you the minorities' involvement with this huge revolution that was hip hop, you know, at the time. Right. So, anything that moves you? There was a lot of things that moved me, you know? It's like, er like every single time I was like watching, I was just like, man, the, okay, these characters are so creative, you know? The, just just being their own character and and within that era in that time you know they're trying to like make it out of their way by being like true to themselves really right. you know and and they're playing towards their talents you got the the girl that he was falling uh for and and chasing after and she's trying to do her own thing and not just like be like a you know helpless or anything she's trying to start her own music career right and she's trying to like come up and then he's trying to do his own thing with his crew and his crew members are even trying to do their own thing aside from that, you know? Right. So it's just, you know, every single episode, it got me because each character is facing decisions, whether it was just like, you know, um, who was this? Uh, uh, the Shaolin Fantastic. Dude, oh, I, yeah. I love, like, the mythology, like, behind him. And then when they like brought him to a character. Kung Fu style, too. Oh, I love that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? And, and yeah. he's got a lot going for him. He was a very talented DJ as a character. And then, like, you know, with his involvement in the actual gangs, you know, he made a lot of decisions that, you know, that were really hard for him. Right. There is a, definitely a gang element to it. So I feel like they're being authentic to how hip hop grew. Now, I don't know who they are, who they're supposed to be exactly. Right. Um, I'm waiting on that. They mentioned like Busy B, but I was, I was thinking that Justice Smith was going to be Busy B, but Busy B didn't have like a real lyrical style. So I... I I don't think he, that's him, and the fact that he mentioned him means that maybe he's not supposed to be him. I, I want to see who mm -hmm. they're supposed to be specifically. So so far we've we've met Grandmaster Flash, yeah, and we've met Cool Herc as far as the actual DJs. We haven't met anyone else, mm -hmm. um, but we're only on six. It's only six episodes. Yeah, it went by quick. So they're gonna do the second part, I believe, um, in 2017. I'm not sure, but there there is a oh, second okay. part to season one. Um, I figure they, I guess they spend so much money, like, well, let's do these six, see how it goes, yeah, test and go from there. Pilot episodes. So they're, they, they've they aired in 140 countries. So what, but what moved me, um, there's the scene where um, Ezekiel, or, or Justice Smith, mm -hmm. he is in the office with um, his girlfriend's uncle, mm -hmm. which is the head over the community center, and they're talking, and he's talking, to, and the, the uncle's telling him that, who do you want to be? Because Ezekiel was like, you know, I don't think I want this job, because who you're going to have me work for is pretty much an oppressor of the ghetto, and I don't, right. I don't appreciate that. I don't think I can work for him. Mm -hmm. So he's like, who do you want to be? You know, he's letting, letting them, looking outside this window, and he's, he's saying, that you want to be like the rest of the, the people out here, or do you want to overcome you know, your scenario, your situation. Right. And I'm like, man, because that's, that's, because I grew up in the ghetto and pretty much I had to take it, I had to make a decision. Did, did I want to be a victim of my circumstances or do I want to overcome it? And I didn't really have, you know, a male role model to just give me that decision. I had to like really just make it on my own. I had to watch other people. Um, so I had, you know, role models in my life, but no one like said, you know, what do you want to be? So when he's when he's talking to him, I'm like, man, because they're looking outside the window and they they, they see his friend that's you know considered oh, to be right. riff raff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that's a deep question for me, and, and it really moved me. I'm like, man, if we can just have more male influence influences like right. that, mentor, right? You know, maybe we can kind of you know move in a further in a better direction. Yeah. Um, so that moved me. Um, when he was talking to his girlfriend, when he's confessing his love to his girlfriend. Oh, man. With those, it was so often. I thought that he was about to bray. I was like, okay, the, he, this is where he's going to, you know, show his bad acting. And he didn't. He, it seems so authentic when he's saying, I love you. Right, right, right. How can we can't be together? Yeah. And that, that, that part really moved me. So who's your favorite character? Do you have a favorite character? Favorite character. Uh, you know, I definitely think that Ezekiel, Justin Smith, uh, his character has got to be like one of my favorite characters. And then Shaolin Fantastic. I just love what they did with both of their roles. And it follows both of them a lot. Um, 
Mylene, uh, the actor, how do you even pronounce her name? Her- Here is in uh, Guardiola. Whew. Whew. All right, Mylene Cruz. Say so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean, the three of them. Uh, it really follows their character, and, you know, I did. I, totally love their character you know you got the wordsmith you got the dj he's the conductor kind of got that you know they're vibing off of each other it's like we're gonna be a partnership it's like you know batman robin you know yeah. um so i got that and then you know you got this you know his girlfriend so you got a love triangle kind of going in there you know right like, uh, i love the camaraderie yeah of the kids of, of that group you know they're like I don't know. I, I just I don't see people being friends like that anymore. Oh, man. Like they That's are rough. do or die yeah. friends. You know, right. they're always thinking about each other uh-huh. and who's going to need each other. Like when um, uh, when Ezekiel goes to uh, Cool Hurt um, to their little thing to find out who's dubbing their tapes. Mm-hmm. The other three guys, like you know what, they're going to need us. They're right. out there on their own. They're going to need us. And they just group up and they go help them out. And I was yeah. like, you know what? I like that. It's right. not just like, well, they're doing what they're doing. I don't know. Like, oh, they're going to get messed up. <laughs> right. It's like, well, that had nothing to do with me. And I feel like that's, well, at least in L.A., that's how people are. It's just like, what are you going to do for me? Oh, nothing? Well, then I'm not going to help you. Oh, you know, I, and I don't like it. So I, I, I like that they're actual friends. Yeah, it was more of a brotherhood almost. You know, right. it's like their crew. They're watching out for each other. Exactly. I mean, Otherwise, the crew is not going to be around for that long. So, I mean, they're trying to, you know, develop their crew, really, you know, piggyback off of each other. Right. If I come up, you're going to come up. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so I like that. You know, and I, I like the the authenticity of what they're they're bringing, you know. So, they mention how, cool when they go to Cool Herd's spot, mm-hmm. they mention how back in the day, we used to rumble. We used to fight with our fists. Yeah. But now, we've, you know, become more sophisticated, mm-hmm. and we fight with dance yeah so if you want to go ahead and hash it out you're gonna have to do a, a battle yeah and i was like that because that is what it used to be that is awesome they used to battle <laughs> if you we had an issue right. they used to battle yeah we're gonna start break locking and break dancing and all this stuff pop locking sorry yeah. pop locking and break dancing <laughs> and that's how and if you lost you need to be quiet about the situation because obviously we're the superior ones right and and that's i feel like that's been so lost no one's cared about any type of battling when we have issues anymore right. it's we go on blows with each other right and right. i feel like that's just kind of you know not a good way to resolve things but i do like how they brought that yeah because uh, you got a lot more to represent after that you know it's just like it's not just you know okay there's just gonna be the strongest guy there's just gonna be a brute but this is just a whole nother level of you know intelligence and genius and using your talent you know and so it's just like a lot more involved and then everyone just benefits off of it and they get to live (laughs) to fight another day exactly it's not just like it's like i'm gonna come back with some new moves that this guy has never seen got you know represent like whatever crews they're all broken down into different crews which is great right and that that rap battle that they had they did not call it a rap battle yet they don't even, they're not even calling it rap. Uh, supposedly it was called the Get Down. And the Get Down was the version, so we all know that they sample from, uh, from you know, already made songs. They sample songs. Mm-hmm. So what they would do is they would sample the song, the part of the song that was just the beat. And they would call the singing part the whack part. Mm-hmm. And the Get Down was the part where it was just the beat. And that's how they, you know, would do the mix up. So they would make sure... That oh, that's another thing. When Grandma's of Five was telling them how to know where to actually mix, I love that the actual crayon. Yes, how, he gave him a crayon. He was like, "Find out what to, what to do with this. You'll you'll know what to do with it. And if you can figure it out, then you can be my apprentice." So they have all these ideas of what the hell this crayon is supposed to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and they want to give up, which is probably what I would do. Like crayon man, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You tell me or not. Right. You know, so, but once they figured it out that they can actually mark on the records, because the record is made of wax, the crayon is made of wax, so when they mark it, it's not going to hurt it. And then they can know exactly where the get down is every time. So, I thought that was kind of that was awesome. that was knowledge. It was I was like able a to learn something. Life hack, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's why he's the master. You know? Exactly. You know, all his years of experience. Like, oh, take a crayon. This is wax. This is wax. I never knew. Maybe that. a candle. I don't know. And if you want to be a DJ, kind of. Right. <laughs> Inspired. So the authentic- authenticity is pretty good. Uh, I-, I appreciate it. Um, I also like that there was when they were doing their rhymes. There was no cursing. I was gonna say that too because there was a big thing. It's like we can't we can't curse, you know. We can't say curse words right. and all that stuff. It has to be for everyone to listen to. Now the curse do the whole show, yeah, right? But when it comes to actually putting it on wax, you're like, no, nah, we can do that. 
No, not not in the actual get down for it. You know, right. not, not not during the battle. So I mean, you know, they I came like up that. with a very clever way of kind of disguising it. It's like, oh yeah, it's like he's a bad mother. Right. You know, and I, I love it. Scratch it. Awesome. Because yeah, when they were first saying that, I was like, man, y'all been cussing this whole time. You know, cursing the songs I playing. But I have to remember, it's the seventies. They're not cursing on these songs. Yeah, and I was like, that man, that makes so much sense. I I appreciate that. But when you listen to like you know some of the like great hip hop music, even now like Nas, you know, he doesn't actually curse a lot in his rap. You know, there is actually a lot of songs that I've listened to. I don't listen to Nas, so I don't I don't know, <laughs> but I feel like I don't know if that's he, accurate. He, he he does have some music that he doesn't curse in, and I like. He has it. some anthems, so okay, <laughs> sure. It's, it, it might be some songs. It, it, it's pretty dope. You but know? most people now... There's going to be cursing. And I feel like that's kind of just filler. <laughs> just filler for a word, you know. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like you just need to say a certain word to Absolutely. get your point across. I get it. Yeah. I'm a bad mother. That just sounds... If you just... I mean, you can't say... I'm a bad sugar father. Like, that just don't work. You know, so... <laughs> sugar father. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sweet. Sometimes you need to say a certain thing. I get it. You know? I get it. But, I mean, I feel that there's, like, so many words in the, you know, vocabulary that are out there that, you know, you come up with a way creative way that no one's done before, and that's going to set you apart. And I feel like they... I can agree they, with that. They ended up doing that with this, you know? They, they, they had to take a creative aspect and... You know, they, you know, he came up with the lyrics up to a certain point. He's like, just do it. Watch. All right. And chuka chuka, And then just scratched it that point. Yeah. Wish I can. What was he saying? Um, Shaolin uh, Fantastic is the the person who call our conductor. Oh, yeah. Shaolin, Shaolin Fantastic is our conductor. Because Shaolin Fantastic is a bad mother. Yeah, I love yeah. that part. I'm like, did they get that from somewhere? Yeah. Sound familiar? Yeah, but maybe not. Maybe they made it up. I thought it was pretty cool though. Oh man, it was dope. So the storytelling, I feel, is I'm going to say awesome. They're telling like three different stories, yeah, all at the same time, and I feel like it's a little different from what we get from a lot of these different shows that we're watching. You know, Game of Thrones, yeah, um, Walking Dead. They pretty much focus on one or two people. The whole show, right? And you kind of lose track of what happened to you know the other characters. But this show, mm -hmm. they are combining pretty much all three stories. They got the group of kids, mm -hmm. they got the disco um, people, mm -hmm. and they have the girl and her her journey. Right. And they are mixing all these stories together, and I feel like it's just so fluent. Like I it don't is. feel like I'm I'm missing anything. It's such an easy watch, and like yeah, just like you said, it's pretty like fluid. The way that they take you through these other characters, and the way that you know, each of them comes up, you know, if they're going to be talking about politics, they're going to be talking about the gangs and their politics and, you know, how those politicians are even related to some of our lead characters, like right. being the girl, right. and then how the girl's interacting with the guy that's also working for the politician as an intern. Right. So there was a lot of mesh and mold, and it was and just like so a good. perfect, yeah. Right. It, it doesn't seem like, man, really, or not. What happened? It, it, when, they, when they switch over to the next group, it's there. It's always it's a different, I guess, point of view. Right. But they all it connects in some way. Yeah, absolutely. And even when they do the the music, when they got the disco people and they got the 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 DJ and yeah. then they have the the girl that wants to sing. Mm -hmm. When they're mixing the music, it all just comes together. It was awesome. Yeah, it, I, and it was. Perfect. I did. A, I really appreciate that because sometimes you just kind of get lost. Some people just can't do multiple characters at once. Some directors yeah. just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're the way they're writing it. I just liked it. Like I, mm -hmm. when they're when they're flipping back and forth to the different groups of, mm -hmm. of characters, I'm like, oh, oh, right, oh, exactly. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just good. It makes you appreciate every single character, and it's just like not. It, it's just adds that more complexity to a supporting role for those right. characters, you know. Right. Because I mean, when we're actually finding, you know, Jaden's character, we were talking about how he's like, this is good because he's a supporting role. Well, one of the biggest things that he did was that, like, you know. The girl that recorded this uh, album and made an actual track uh, couldn't get recognized by a record label until he actually got a copy and took it to like a party that one of the bigger DJs had and played it. Now, I was wondering if Jaden Smith's character was going to be kind of homosexual. 
Yeah. Because, <laughs> I, because he wears dresses and things like that. So I'm like, I feel like he's kind of like Kind of foo-foo and kind of yeah, like hippie-ish. That's his thing. Know? Yeah. You know, so when he first came on the screen, I was like, hmm, yeah. I wonder where this is going to go. And that's exactly where it went. It went. It went he went, went, he went he goes there. to this, went um, <laughs> I guess this... Uh, gay disco club yeah, yeah. apparently in which I didn't know because I don't know a lot about disco but um, the homosexuals pretty much run disco if you want to get any disco song mm -hmm. out you have to pretty much go through them mm -hmm. and he ends up with a copy of the record and he goes to a, a disco club with one of his friends and they ended up you know Kissing ended up doing yeah. they, he sees all of his cross dressers and things like that well he did, um, I think he did drugs too or something yeah, they did drugs. They did drugs at the disco, but obviously... I don't know what it was, but it was something. Something, yeah. Um, and it just allowed them to kind of, like, let loose or whatnot. Right. Um, and that's how they got her record to be played, because the producer that she had uh, was pretty much blackballed from the whole industry. Right. And, oh, that scene where he tries to go to the, the lady that, that um, I guess, proofs all the different records that come in. Right, yeah. Um, I've lost out. I was like, that's like male rape right there. <laughs> but that was her getting back at, at the guy, too. Yeah, know? I guess so. You know, I, I don't know. She had his finger, her fingers all in his mouth. I was like, what is happening right now? I was like, this is gross. <laughs> I was waiting for him to throw right. up. <laughs> but I'm like, uh, I was expecting for them to pull out the dildo or something. I was like, what is he about to have to do <laughs> to, get, to get this record played? And it didn't even work. It still didn't get played. She's like, nope. So, the last episode I thought yes. was brilliant. I feel like I got my intellectual value for sure Absolutely. because of the, the, the scene where he does his speech. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, um, the candidate that wants to be mayor, he asks the, uh, Ezekiel, is Ezekiel? Right. Um, yeah. yeah, Ezekiel to do a speech uh, so he can be kind of like the poster child, you know, of the ghetto. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he tells him to do a, a certain, they have it written down, exactly what he's supposed to already say, and he's just not feeling it at the moment. And I thought that he was going to blow his chance to be something great. I really did, yeah. Because, I mean, that that's what most, I guess, characters do in shows. Right. You're like, you know, okay, he's about to just say, you know what, forget this. Right. And the way that he did it, he was able to get his point across to the young folks. Mm -hmm. And to the to the mayor, to the new mayor, or to the older crowd as well. Yeah. I thought he was for sure about to say, you know what, forget this clown. He doesn't want, you know, you know, justice for our people. He wants to lock us mm -hmm. up. You know, I thought that he was really going to go way left with it. Absolutely. But the the way he did it was so artistically and so intelligent that yeah. he was able to speak to the young people mm -hmm. and the older people mm -hmm. and still be in the same position he's in. Yeah. I thought that was great. Because, so at the time that they're doing the speech is the actual same time that uh, him and his crew are about to do the battle, right. you know, and he is not there, you know, so everything's timed out. Yeah, so I mean, like, uh, right when he's about to give his speech and he just kind of, like, takes it away and it's just like, you know what, forget it. I thought he was going to literally walk off because he had to go to that breakdance battle, or not breakdance battle, but that crew battle. Right. Um, and, I mean, he was able to deliver his short version of that speech, really touch the kids, you know, he was pointing out the graffiti, like if you're from over here, over there, or what that represents. Right, that he was represents. saying key things that the young people would know about. Exactly. And the, but he was still pacifying the elders, mm -hmm. what what them not knowing exactly what he's saying. He's really right. dissing them mm -hmm. and giving props to the young people. Right. But they don't even know. Right, because it's the, the young crew, it's the young guns, you know, that are going to have to do this voting and, you know, restructuring from, you know, what they have currently, you know. And so... You know, he was able to touch them and then take off to the actual main stage, you know, with his crew. Oh, I thought that the way battle. they did that was really awesome. Because I was, I was like, how are they going to do this battle without him and just be like, I guess, delay the crowd all Absolutely this time? Not, no. I was like, how are they going to do this? I thought it was going to just end up being a bad episode. And But the way they did, they, they pulled it off. They yeah. actually started the battle. Yeah. They waited for a little bit, started the battle, and then Ezekiel comes running across and just like... Still the show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you know, it was it was suspenseful because, like, you know, Shaolin Fantastic is DJ and he's sweating. He's like, man, where is he? He's not right. showing up. Because the Grandmaster of Flash said, if you lose, right. you can no longer DJ anymore. Right. Yeah. So Grandmaster yeah. Flash is like the king. He's he's the master. They know? tried to they tried to bootleg his stuff. Grandmaster Flash goons busted up the party, busted up the uh, the, the windows and stuff, yeah. grabbed the 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 tape. 
right. and said, you know what? You're never going to be DJing again. Right. And I'm like, dang, Grandma Master Flash got it like that? Yeah, absolutely. And he's like, <laughs> like respect, I was just admit, you respect it. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a little, uh, I guess, a music gangster or something yeah, like that. Absolutely, yeah. I, wouldn't, I Does he? Does Grandmaster Flash in the show, is he selling drugs? Uh, no, no. He doesn't show like He's doing something like, I don't know. I, I thought maybe he was like cutting something. I don't know. But they don't show him a lot. They don't show him a lot. But his presence is definitely felt. Uh, I would like to see him a little bit more in the next season, for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know where they're going to go. I, man, I was so upset that I was the last. I'm like, six? There should be a seven, right? Right? We need at least eight episodes. I felt so bad Like after that. I was like, it, so that's it? <laughs> that was it. I checked like a couple times. There was nothing. Right. So if you guys... I'm telling you, get past that first episode. It's a... It is relevant, but at the time, you're not going to know that it is relevant. Yeah. So I would say just power through that, mm -hmm. and it's all going to connect for you later. Yeah. You're going to definitely like it. It's not going to be predictable. It's going to, you're going to have like some nostalgia. Um, it's going to bring you back, and as far as like historical uh, points, it's going to be on point with that. It's going to have all that for you. So if you're a, a lover of music, you're a lover of hip hop, uh, or, or even disco, you're going to like this show. I right. think it's I think it's really geared towards older the older crowd. Yeah, and that's the thing too. It's just like there are so many good things to love about this show. If you like music, like you said, if if you're if you're in the East Coast or born around that era, oh yeah. You know, so you got time, yeah. you got that date, you know, you got all, uh, so many things to Eddie, love about this show. I think you would like this. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> so I mean there's there's so many reasons why you should be watching this show, you know. Yeah. If you like drama, if you like, you know, suspense and you know, there, there, there's there's a lot of... It was written so intelligently. Yeah, it has everything. You know, if if you're young, but you're like old school, you know, if you're actual old school... Yeah, and you, you grew remember up, those, that, those times, you remember you're those times, it. yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, I, I know my mom, she grew up during those times. So, I mean, you know, mm. not, not necessarily on the East Coast, but I mean, during that time, you know, disco era kind of thing. Did she like it? Did she watch it with you? No, I need to get her to watch it, though. Okay. Yeah. So you would say people should be watching it? I think a lot of people should be watching it. Yeah. I think everybody should be watching yeah, it. Yeah, I would definitely say definitely you should watch it. You should... Mm -hmm. If you're Latino and you're African American, you should be watching this show. It has, it had you all throughout the whole thing. Pretty much, yeah. So it's pretty much made for you. Yeah. So the fact that it took $100 million to make this show, at least give it an opportunity. Absolutely, yeah. Power through that first one, I think you're going to like it for yeah. sure. So if you had to rate this... If you had to give it a rating, I'm rating it. <laughs> so let's give it a Netflix rating. Let's do a little bit of something different. So Netflix does like a, a five star. So what would you give it? You know, I would probably give it a four star. Really? Okay. Just because that first episode, I, know, I can't. I, I, I can't I, let I them on that. Yeah, and, can't let them slide. For and that. I, I was like borderline, like, do I continue watching this show? Uh, I I really got to find out. You know. But a lot of shows are like that. They say like the House of Cards is like that. Because I said, you know. Mm -hmm. After two episodes, I'm done. I don't know what's going on with House of Cards. Two episodes is boring. I'm good. But someone told me, a few people told me, you got to get past the first two episodes. I don't know why they do you that. Get so past the first two episodes and you're good. I'm like, but that's that's like where you're going to captivate your audience. Right. I could not do that with The Wire. <laughs> For the life of me, I fell asleep every time I tried to watch that show. I never liked The Wire. Uh oh. I'm, I'm probably going to get some flack for that. I don't know. I'm not a fan of The Wire. But it's not about The Wire. It's about the get down. <laughs> right. So just power through it. It's made for you guys. If if if, if you want to see yourself yeah. as an African American or as a Latino, that's where you should be. Watching Love that. It. Love it. Like hip hop. You like the East Coast. Especially back in that day, if that was like your upbringing, you're going to like the show. Yeah. So I, was, I would definitely say we'll watch it. Four stars, but an, an 8.5. 8.54. Four out of ten. Mm -hmm. um, just because it's just that one show. It's that one episode because it was so long, and I didn't know what I was watching. It was really long. I yeah. had to ding it for that. Yeah, I, I can't let it. Go. I can't let that slide. I definitely have to ding it for that. Um, and uh, you know, if I had to rate it, I have to give it like a four point five because you know I feel like you know that point five. You know, I got I got to give it like maybe like a, you know. I would even give it an eight point five or a nine. Yeah, I'll give it a nine. You know, it's just it's just so good. I can't wait to the next season. I I'll definitely be yeah, watching the I'll next be watching season it for sure. Yeah, I I feel if if they give us like so many good episodes after that first episode and all season two is great, it even picks up great. Then yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm gonna be watching it. That's what I'll be doing that weekend it comes out. Ben's Ben's <laughs> watching it. Ben's watched the whole thing for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Alright guys, well that's what we thought. Hope you liked it. Let us know what you think. If you liked the show, if you didn't like the show, or certain things that we missed or, you know, that we should have said, let us know. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. We'll check out our other videos on our Break Room Blitz where we do the movie reviews. We try to do the uh, skits for you guys every single time we do a movie review. Not the shows, but the movie reviews, we do skits for you guys. So at least let us know that you at least smiled, if not laughed. <laughs> yeah. So, alright guys, Break Room Blitz. I'm your boy, DeAnthony. Adam. And we're out. Peace. Peace.